everyone, I'm Katie Green. I'm an event manager for CNCF. I plan a myriad of events, including KubeCon, and I also support the Kubernetes Community Days program, also known as KCDs. And I'm Bill Mulligan. I used to work at CNCF, and I helped restart the KCD program. Uh, I've been involved in a couple ones as a community member, and now I'm over at Isovalent working on the Cilium and eBPF communities. Great. And today we're presenting about Kubernetes Community Days for fun and for community profit. So with that, uh, you might be wondering, what exactly is the Kubernetes Community Day program? Well, if you're here at KubeCon, you kind of already know what a Kubernetes and Cloud Native conference. You can think of a KCD as a scaled down way of doing a KubeCon for your local community. It's a great way. I'm sure all of you have met some great friends here, uh, amazing connections, uh, other people you want to follow up with after the conference. KCDs are a great way to connect with other people and have these same conversations in your local region. I know for me, uh, it was about a 14 hour flight to get here. What if you could instead take a 14 minute walk down the street to go and have these same conversations? That's what the KCD program is all about, is it's bringing cloud native to your local community to learn, to collaborate, to network, and advance the cloud native community as a whole. We've had KCDs all over the world, as you can see by um, the logos at the bottom, and it's been an amazing experience to work with all of the great people behind it. So beyond just that, um, they're a lot of fun. These are a lot of pictures from the KCD program uh, that happened in Berlin this summer. It was actually our first KCD program. A lot of them were happening virtually because of the pandemic, um, but it was really exciting to see all these cloud native technologists uh, joining in one place in person to talk about Kubernetes, to share a drink, and to even go boating. Uh, so this could be you. I think that's a great point that you brought up. I think that's a great point that you brought up, Bill. There, Bill, that a lot of these are starting to happen in person, but they can happen online and virtually, or as a hybrid program as well. It's a way to bring education and information to your local community, and it doesn't always have to be directly in person to be impactful. So as I was saying, and as you saw in the logos, KCDs are happening all around the world. Um, this map is a couple of where they've happened in 2022, but we're seeing them pop up in lots of different places um, around the globe. The blue diamonds represent KCDs that are happening in, in the latter half of the year and into 2023. Yeah, and so your next question may be, okay, this sounds like something that's cool. Who can, who's organizing them and who's doing it? So when you don't have Katie here to do uh, all the tech support for her own talk, who's actually putting it together? Well, it's people in the cloud native community. It's people like CNCF ambassadors, it's CNCF community evangelists, it's members of, it's people at member companies, it's the people who are organizing the cloud native meetups in your local organization, and it might even be you. Uh, for me, for instance, I've been involved in the program committee for both KCD Berlin and also for KCD Munich, and I'm looking forward to helping out with KCD Zurich next year. So you could be the person helping make a KCD possible in your own local community. Now, the question is, why would you want to organize one? What's the benefits of this for you? What, why would you want to get involved? As we were talking about before, um, for me, it's really about the people. I, I think I really love connecting with people in the cloud native community, and that's what KCDs bring to the community. So it's a way to collect people from around you to share ideas and talk about them. Um, and it's a great thing is, the next time you, you see those people, it doesn't have to be six months later at the next KubeCon. You can have lunch with them the next week. It's the people who you're gonna see on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week basis that are gonna be in your local area. And I think that's a great network to build. You also, if you're a meetup organizer, you can grow the impact of your lo local meetup instead of having one or two talks every month. You can have a half day, a full day, two days, and be able to share that information with your community. I'm sure you have a bunch of submissions or a bunch of things you'd like to hear talks about, and there's people who'd like to present about that in the, their community. 
in your community. And it's a great way to expand it beyond just one or two talks a month. As I said before, you can meet lots of friends and business partners in the cloud native space. Um, for me, for instance, I have gone around to a, a bunch of KCDs and been able to connect with a lot of people um, that I like hanging out with. And I know a lot of um, new business partnerships have come out of the cloud, uh, out of the KCDs too. Um, for instance, I know uh, one person that's here uh, because they're organizing a KCD, one of the sponsors, uh, actually paid for them to come to KubeCon. Um, so that could be you too. And lastly, it's also about, I think, really growing the um, grassroots of the cloud native community too. So as you probably know, uh, KubeCon has a very low acceptance rate. I think it's below 10%. Um, it's not a space where everybody can present because there's just not space or time to be able to do that. KCDs are a great way to expand the reach, uh, to let new speakers take the stage, get practice, and be able to hopefully one day present at KubeCon too. Yeah, I'm, I'm a new KubeCon speaker, so <laughs> that's exactly what KCDs do. Um, it also does professional growth. You know, you can learn how to plan and organize events. There's a lot of moving parts to planning events. There's a lot of growth within learning how to perfect AV and curating a speaker lineup. So those kind of things are a great thing to have on your resume. It also allows you to grow your community and have your and bring talks that might be engaging for your community or places for people to learn how to continue to grow. There might be novice um, and beginners in your community. There might be experts or intermediates, and it's a great place for them to kind of get together and learn from each other and grow and, and expand. You'll also learn how to discover new technologies and trends within cloud native. A lot of people are doing really cool things in the cloud native industry. So it, it's a cool place to kind of have that, like Phil said, grassroots conversations around the technology and what people are doing and how they're using it. You can also use it to sustain the cloud native community um, and network with local adopters of cloud, cloud native technologies. So it's a time to kind of there are people who um, have been in the community for a long time. Maybe there's a few people within the universities that are getting ready to join the workforce and are looking for internships. It's a great way to connect them. It's a great place for us to, like Phil said, bring together the meetup group and talk more in depth about the technology. Um, overall, it's just reinvesting back into your local community and helping businesses grow. So getting started, it, you don't have to know all the information when you want to get started, but to get started, having some initial details, going to the CNCF Kubernetes Days GitHub is a great place to go. You can see all the other issues that are currently open with, Git, with KCDs who are currently in the process of planning. It's a great place for you to determine if you can host a KCD in your area or join a local KCD that's already started. Um, just initially wanting the passion to bring that to your community is essential. Um, you can have as much information that's on this slide ready, or you can have as little. Just put in there, Audra and myself will reach out, and we're here to help and make this process seamless. There are terms to and conditions to having a KCD. Um, it's just to make sure that you have a successful event, that you're abiding by the CNCF standards. We want to make sure that we're setting you up for, I mean, lack of better words, success, right? We want, to, we want this to be something that continues not just once. We want it to be something that you host annually. We want to make sure that your community grows. We want to make sure that as you're growing your community, you're thinking about meetups and that those meetups are happening maybe monthly, maybe quarter, quarterly, maybe you know, biannually, whatever works best for your community. But we're here to, to support that. And this terms and conditions help us ensure that we're giving you that proper support and that you feel confident and comfortable in what you're doing. 
In addition to all of that, we've also made this process a little bit simpler. I know event planning is super daunting. I've been in it for 15 plus years now and I still get butterflies and nervous and I have moments in the middle of the night where I wake up. Um, so it's okay to feel that pressure. Uh, we've tried to make it as easy as we can by creating templates around how to, um, how to organize your event, have checklists on when you should be, um, like what you should be doing three months out, two weeks out, a week out from your event. We have templates around sponsorships and registration templates. And if you see something that's missing, let us know. Audra and I are happy to make that template for you. So a few new features that happened this year, I talked a little bit about the templates for getting started, how to um, have sponsorships, registration questions, AV set up. We've also uh, recognized that a video on how to use our programs like SM Apply and Bevy were needed, so we've created those as well, kind of step-by-step -step processes of issues that you might run into when you're utilizing those. We've also organized um, an organizer's meetup. It's a great place for us to share topics related to the planning process and to have peer-to-peer -peer learning. The best thing is to know that you're not alone in this process. There are a lot of other organizers out there who are you know, either coming up against the same issues or thinking through fun ways to bring their community get together, and it's a great place to learn from each other. And then we also learned that within Bevy, you're able to pull your analyt own analytics now, which is really huge. You weren't able to do that before. You would have to go through Audra and I. Additionally, we've uh, implemented Credly badges. We've gone ahead and given those to people who participated in 2021, and we're issuing them for 2022. For 2023, we're super excited to uh, send out quarterly surveys with our organizers. This data and getting your feedback helps us to ensure the growth of the program. We're also looking at how to implement training at KCDs in the future for 2023. So having a day of content or maybe half a day of content with a half a day of training or a day of training is something the CNCF would really like to support and provide all of the organizers and all of you who are in this room because I think after this, you're going to go out and have a KCD. So we'd like to support that. We're also going to relaunch the Speaker Bureau and um, a program called CNCF First. This is just to help when you're um, either struggling to get CFP submissions, if you're struggling with um, getting a diverse uh, CFP submissions, this is a great place where people are gonna indicate that they want to speak at your event. Maybe there's someone who's gonna talk about a specific technology to help round out your program. And then lastly, we will be issuing a annual transparency report around KCDs and that growth and success that happens with it. So with that, some of the lessons learned of organizing uh, tens of KCDs all around the globe and what will help set you up for success. So the first one, start small. Um, I know you may be super excited about bringing the community together and say you want to plan the next KubeCon, but <laughs> that takes a whole team and <laughs> more than a full team. Um, it's good to even have just 100 people. I know a couple of KCDs that started with just that and they're growing each year. You don't need to have the biggest event to begin with and the sustainability of your event is more important than that because it's these relationships that come back year after year is what is really gonna help grow the community. So the first thing that you should do is to go to that um, KCD repo, see if there's a local meetup um, in your area and you don't need to do something big. Um, we've had really successful uh, KCD programs that are even just a half day or one full day um, in a single track. You can even have just like five or six sessions um, as a way to expand that. The second part, um, definitely think about diversity 
from the beginning. I, I think that's a core tenant of the cloud native community, and you should make sure you think about it um, before you even begin. Reach out to your community early. Uh, make sure that you have um, a diverse set of companies organizing it, a diverse set of people looking at the CFP, people reaching out and promoting about the CFP. Um, it's also good to reach out to local clubs. Maybe there's an AWS cloud meetup in your area or um, different organizations like, say, like Girls Who Code, who might be interested in speaking at uh, KCD. Also, it's great to have a connection to the universities in your area. Students are always looking to, I guess, kind of get their first experience in their job outside um, of the university and the academic setting. This is a great transition of getting people into the cloud native industry too. And you should really reach out to them to tell them about your event um, and to help them grow. And the great thing is, is they can help you grow the event too. Their reach can become your reach too. You should also reach out at any point to the CNCF ambassadors. They're people who are very energetic and engaged about the cloud native community. I'm sure they'll be very happy to help you. And also you have a great uh, team on the CNCF with Katie and Audra, and I'm sure they'd be happy to help um, with anything that you want. Um, running events, while well, each of them, it's kind of like is unhappy in their own way. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, there are a lot of similarities between events. So um, you can leverage the templates. Uh, there's a lot of things that you need to do in terms of like promoting it um, in terms of how to do the CFP. Obviously, there's minor details that'll be different, and you'll have to work out those um, by yourselves, but the templates are a great place to start. Uh, you can leverage uh, years, even decades of experience of running events before. And also consider tying your KCD to another local event. Uh, so we've had great partnerships with things like uh, OpenStack Days. Uh, there's one in KCD LA's mm -hmm. pa pairing with Scale, and there's also one in KCD Mania that um, uh, yeah. was co-located with... DevSlam out there. Yeah, and DevSlam. In Taiwan, they um, co-located with CCOC S. Yeah, yeah. So. like an open source uh, mm -hmm. event there. So it's a great way to uh, connect your um, community to a larger audience, too. Um, so building your team. It's a great idea from the start to kind of have regular check-ins with both your team and CNCF. We're here to help you, we're here to support you, we're here to work through any challenges you have. Um, chances are whatever challenges you have, another KCD has had it before, or we've even had it within our own events, and we can help kind of guide you through that process. Create a call cadence with your team and review the checklist that you have. Identify who's working on what, um, but also realize that there's flexibility in roles. So you may be working on, say, the CF or uh, pr promotion, and someone else is working on registration, but the person who's working on promotion needs help, you can jump over and help them. There's not a simple, I'm in this one role. You're all here to help each other. You're all here to learn from each other. Um, so just remember that you're working towards a shared goal, and you're here to be one team. And then confirm a check-in cadence with the CNCF. Uh, both Audra and I are active on Slack. Uh, using the GitHub issue is a great way for us to track communication back and forth and e outside of email. It just allows us to see, you know, if Audra's out of office, what kind of conversation she's had, or I can jump in and answer it as well. Uh, we all know disagreements happen. They happen in everyday life. They're going to happen at work as well. We all have visions of what we want the program to look like. There's no wrong or right, right way around that. Um, but we're here, happy, here to help, and we're happy to help. The CNCF is here to be a neutral voice. So if you are having disagreements and you just can't seem to find a common ground, definitely reach out. We're here to help kind of neutralize that and, and find a... Um, compromise. And just remember, we're all working towards the same goal. So no one has one right, you know, approach to getting there. And that's kind of the beauty of these programs. And don't do it alone. Reach out to your community. They're here to help guide you in what they want to learn and how they want the program to learn. Some programs like to 
like Bill said, was that they did half a day of content and then a bunch of networking at the end. You could do a lot of content heavy um, programs or you can you know, have a specific top, like, track on a specific technology. Um, so just kind of reach out and, and you know, survey your community, survey them at the end, ask them what they like best, what they would like to learn more about for the next one. Yeah, and another question is, once your event is in progress or done, how do you consider was it successful or not? I think the big thing that we've been trying to say here is that there's no right way, there's no wrong way, there's no cookie cutter way to do a KCD. Every single community around the globe has different needs, has different ones, have different things that they're focusing on. So there's not one perfect way to do a KCD. What you should like focus on as a way to make sure that the um, cloud native community continues to grow, and I think what would be a success for the program as a whole and for your event is one, making sure that you elevate people who wouldn't otherwise to get the opportunity to speak, right? This is about helping grow the cloud native community at the grassroots lo level. Make sure that you help people do that. Uh, the second one is like educating um, the meeting and meet the needs of your local community. So what Katie was saying, reach out to your local community, figure out what they want, um, make sure that you're focusing on that. That'll what it, make your su program successful for your local community. And the last one is like really just empower your community by planning different types and size of event by um, depending on the region. Like just as the same way it wouldn't make sense to do a KCD with only French speakers um, in Indonesia, um, there's lots of other details like that that aren't as obvious. Um, you should focus on the needs and the wants of your community. And different types of events, as I was saying, are all gonna have different types of challenges. A virtual event is gonna have different than an in-person event. A two-track uh, um, event is gonna have different challenges than a one-track event. Um, so you are gonna need to tackle each of those challenges, but the CNCF team uh, is here to support you too. And some of the program successes that we had. Um, so when I was still at CNCF, <laughs> we launched the program back in 2021. I think it was really cool. Um, it was the first year I had absolutely no idea uh, what was gonna happen or if anybody was gonna show up. And I think the community really turned up, uh, <laughs> much to my surprise and uh, delight. So we had uh, 12 KCDs uh, that were in-person, virtual, and hybrid in multiple different languages. Uh, we had over 7,500 people, uh, a lot of them new to the cloud native community and connecting them into what we're doing here uh, at KubeCon and in 12 different countries. I, I think the coolest thing for me was that, uh, right, KubeCon is three times a year. It's in very small cities, uh, or it's in very large cities, but only a small fraction of the population. You saw Priyanka's uh, keynote, there's 7 million people, and we only have about 7,000 here. That's a fraction of the percentage of people that are in cloud native. KCDs have allowed us to take the cloud native community, instead of bringing the cloud native community, we're able to bring the cloud native community to the world. And it was really cool to see the program launch to that. Uh, beyond that, we also have uh, a bunch of successes and what we're talking about, like growing the cloud native community. And so this is actually a talk from the last KubeCon. Um, this person went to KCD Bangalore and he, got inspired at the Contributor Summit there. Um, he started contributing to Kubernetes and actually became a maintainer of one part of the Kubernetes project. So getting new contributors, uh, as was also talked about in the keynote, into the projects, um, getting them to become maintainers of the projects so we do have more people maintaining the projects that we all rely on. And he even spoke at KubeCon too. So I think it's great to see people really progress in that track from the first speaking opportunity, uh, sorry, from the first contribution to becoming a maintainer to the first speaking opportunity. It's really amazing to see the um, KCD program lifting people up like that. And this is what you could bring to people in your local community too. And some great successes as this program grows into 2022. This is as of the beginning of October. So prior to Nina and Munich, we passed 
are hosting 18 CCDs, in-person, virtual, and hybrid. Presentations in multiple languages, like Phil said, that's huge, especially for your local CCD. 450 plus submissions, over 8,700 attendees across 15 countries, and we're yielding a 20, we're actually at 21% non-male speakers after uh, Munich and Mina. Which is really, really big and impactful within the CCDI effort. Um, overall program successes, just over the last few years, these are just kind of highlights that we have hosted uh, 63 events, um, 16,000 plus attendees, 501 KCD chapter members, averaging, if you spread out all those attendees across, 257 attendees across events, um, and 24 chapters in general. So what will your community gain? This is a big one. You're gonna gain new friends, new colleagues. You're gonna have a local support system. When you're stuck on a problem, it's great to be able to have that new connection that you can reach out to. And then it's a, like Bill said, a connection to the larger cloud native community. Um, there has been talks about some KCDs providing you know, surplus in their budgets to uh, promote a local community member come to larger KCDs or to the larger QCon. So those kind of things help the growth of the ecosystem overall. Um, it's an ability to give non-code contributions to the ecosystem and, and show that importance around it. Not everything has to be code related, um, but knowing that we all have that open mindset and many minds are better than one helps to grow the, the, um, grow the community. I feel like I keep saying that. But it, it does. does. It helps. <laughs> And then it just has acceleration, um, growth around projects. As Bill said, one person started to contribute to Kubernetes and become a maintainer. That could happen within your own community as well. It helps you to connect to other communities where we have a KCD organizers channel where you're talking to other organizers across the globe. So it has a wider reach where you're able to connect and learn from each other. And it helps to build built businesses. There's a lot of people who come out of this either finding a new job or getting an internship or the growth of um, contributions within a business or you know, that you're learning from this helps to grow your own current business. Uh, so where does that leave us? Get started today. Uh, Obviously, I'm hopeful that everyone in this room will walk out here and want to become a KCD organizer. It's a lot of fun. Um, and feel free to ask questions. Feel free to send an email or reach out to Audra and I in Slack. Um, check out the GitHub. Check out the websites. We're here to help. Uh, don't be scared. Um, half the battle is just started. So just just join and reach out, and we're happy to answer anything. Yeah, um, and I'm also happy to uh, answer. I'm not involved in any of the uh, organization anymore, but I have seen a few of them, so if you have any questions, I'm also happy to help, too. Um, and with that, I think thank you for coming today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for that, um, the recommendation is to have at least three people from three different companies, so you're hearing voices from um, many different people. It can grow. I think uh, KCD UK is here. You, got, you all have how many people? Nine people, that's what I thought. So it, it, there's no set number. Three is a great starting point. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah. if you have you know, nine or 12 or seven or five, that's great too. I mean, I think there's a couple of things that play into that, you know, uh, around, uh, I mean, firstly, race and sponsorship, you know, the, you know, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's all from local sponsors, yeah. We do provide you access to platforms, um, which is a, a big port. Yeah. So a contributing factor in your cost. Um, so we offer you access to like SM Apply or Bevy. Um, you are not like, it's not a hard line in the sand that you have to use those programs, but we do have those programs available for you. Yeah, Yeah. Um, you have to be an organizer and actively contributing to the KCD. Uh, you can't just kind of join a KCD and not contribute. Your fellow organizers will let us know. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's the short answer to it. Um, if you're interested on more information about it and those kind of check marks, you can send me a message and I'd be happy to share it with you. has all the guidelines on how to be an organizer and um, you know a little diversity course that you can take that's really short. Uh, and then at least having one person that's a CNCF member or ambassador and then you're not all from one organization mm -hmm. either. So there's no biases. You're coming together as a community. I, I believe you had a question for us. Are there any guidelines for, for sponsors, restrictions? I mean, do we need to have local sponsors, groups, or vetted or something? So no. There. So there's not any, uh, like, rules about, the, the, the only rule is that you can't say a company can't sponsor. This is yeah. like a community event, and you can't say, that's our competitor, they can't be a part of this. It's open to anyone, just like the cloud native community, so you need to be open to anybody sponsoring. But to clarify on that too, you don't have to have sponsors to have a, a successful KCD. Yeah. Um, it's a nice to have because it helps you out financially to be able to host, especially if you're hosting it in person, but if you weren't able to get um, a sponsor for your event. KCD Spain did this recently and they just went fully virtual on the Bevy platform. Yeah. Do they need to be non profits? What happens if there's profits on the event? So, like I said, um, there are profits that come from the event that is kind of um, settled between each KCD. Uh, and how they want to handle that. A lot of KCDs end up uh, donating it in the name of the KCD to a local organization. I know KCD DC donated it to um, Red Cross. Uh, I believe all of you are donating any surplus you have. Um, a few people have talked about taking that money and putting it into like a diversity scholarship to promote someone to come to KubeCon within their local area. So it's kind of up to you how you handle that surplus, but donating it within the name of your KCD is always a great idea. And also roll it over to you. Yeah. yeah. But th with that process, a, a specific company has to hold on to it, and that's kind of where it gets a little complicated, and we can talk through that process and how to work through that as well. I think that's one of the challenges, particularly around, around in-person events. Oh.
And so we're getting cut off here and kicked off the stage, but if you want to <laughs> talk to us, uh, we'll be uh, just outside the doors. We're happy to answer any other questions. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone.